Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lennon. <clears throat> I just wanted to run through the homework and go through a handful of problems uh, to make sure everything's going okay in terms of integration by substitution. Um, I know we did a lot of examples um, in the lecture, but sometimes it's helpful to see them entered on WebAssign as well. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's start with number two. Um, so we're integrating by substitution and our integral here is x squared times the square root of x cubed plus 13 dx. So <clears throat> we want to let u be what's underneath the radical here. So we want to let u be x cubed plus 13. So then du is 3x squared dx. And remember, we want to solve for dx. So we divide by 3x squared. So du over 3x squared is what's going to replace dx. So if we bring our integral down here, we're going to get the integral now. We have our x squared. We have the square root of u, but I want to think about that as u to the 1 half power. And then we have du over 3x squared, replacing the last part. So the x squareds are going to cancel, and I'll have a 1 third integral of u to the 1 half du. And then what I want to do is I want to add one of the powers, so it's going to be 3 over 2, and then I need to multiply by the reciprocal because I'm dividing by three over two, that's equivalent to multiplying by two thirds. So we have one third times two thirds times u to the three over two plus c, and then that's gonna be two ninths. And let's change u back to x for the final answer. That's gonna be x cubed plus 13 to the three over two plus our constant of integration. So that should be the answer here for number two. Let's make sure that that checks out. Make sure they don't require us to use a radical notation or anything like that. Okay, so plus 13, close parentheses, and raise to the 3 over 2. And that should be it. So let's go ahead and check that answer. And it checks out. So we didn't have to use radical notation. It was fine with that. Um, 3, I'm pretty sure we did that exact one in the uh, lecture. Uh, four looks pretty easy as well. Why don't we look at uh, five? Five looks a little trickier. Um, <clears throat> so five, we have the integral of x squared over this square root of 0.8x cubed plus 2.2. This is all below the radical. Um, again, we're going to let u be the uh, what's below the radical on the bottom this time, so that's 0.8 x cubed plus 2.2. So our du is going to be 2.4 x squared, taking the derivative, and then we want to divide by that to solve for dx. So du over 2.4 x squared is dx. So again, we're using u and uh, what we've solved for dx as our substitutions. So we have the integral of x squared over um, the square root of u times this du over 2.4 x squared. Okay, so the x squareds cancel, and uh, let's see, one divided by 2.4, does that come out to anything nice? Um, not really, so we'll just leave it as one over 2.4. Um, so we have the 1 over 2.4 on the outside. Then we're taking the integral. 1 divided by the square root of u is the same as u to the negative 1 half du. So uh, this time we're adding 1 half. And that's going to allow us to multiply by 2 because dividing by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2. So we'll have 2 divided by 2.4 times u to the 1 half plus our constant of integration. Um, yeah, and we want to replace u by what we originally substituted it for. Um, yeah, so I don't know if they're going to allow us to use this 2 over 2.4. We may have to rewrite it as a fraction, but if we do, uh, that will be okay. So 0.8x cubed plus 2.2. So we have 2 over 2.4 times this 0.8x cubed plus 2.2. Um, the one half plus our constant. Let's see if they accept this, and if they don't, then we'll go ahead and rewrite that. Um, 
weird looking fraction decimal just as a fraction in lowest terms. So we're raising that to the one half, so that looks all right. Let's check that, see if it works. Oh, they give us the check mark. So you don't have to do anything fancy. You can leave it as two divided by 2.4, even though that looks a little bit strange. Uh, I mean, one way to put it in lowest terms if you really want to. Um, so you could do two over 2.4. You could multiply the top and bottom by 10. You get 20 over two point over 24 which is the same as then you just reduce from here so that would be five over six so that comes out to five six so you could do that if you want um, but it's not strictly necessary um, if you wanted to write it as a fraction so let's go ahead on to the next one um, how about uh, number six So we have the integral of e to the x times the square root of 7 plus e to the x dx. So we want to let u be the 7 plus e to the x. And then du is going to equal e to the x dx. If you want to solve for dx, you can do that, although it's going to replace directly here. Um, so our integral becomes the integral of e to the x times the square root of u times du over e to the x. So we're just doing the integral of u to the 1 half du. And we've done that a few times now already. That's going to be 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus a constant. Um, again, that's going to be uh, 7 plus e to the x to the 3 over 2 plus a constant. So that's our answer here. Seven plus e to the x raised to the three over two. And let's go ahead and check that. And we got it correct. Um, Oh, so I may have to go over a couple of these. I did not realize there were some integration by parts on here. So uh, there was a section more than I anticipated on this homework. Um, anyway, so, so we can go over um, a couple of those, but I'll also post my lecture on integration by parts. That, uh, that, that should be next week. Um, so why don't we... Um, Go ahead and well, let's let's do number seven, one more substitution, and then I'll do two integration by parts problems. Um, I thought this was only on substitution, so that is my mistake. Um, so this is the integral of the natural log of x to the tenth over x dx, and so this one what we want to do is we want to let u be the natural log of x, and then du is going to be one over x dx. So when you solve for dx this time, you get x times du is equal to dx. So watch what happens here. Now we get the uh, integral of u to the 10th over x times x dx. And again, like I said, if you make your choice of u appropriately, then you're always going to cancel all the x's that you have and uh, just be left with an integral in terms of u. So this is really simple. It becomes u to the 11 over 11 plus a constant and u was just the natural log of x. So we're really getting the natural log of x raised to the 11th over 11 plus a constant. So that's what we're getting here. Um, so the natural, so let me put that in parentheses, natural log of x to the 11th um, over 11. And then we want to use a plus c. It looks like they're using a capital C. I don't know if it'll make a difference. But yeah, we got that one right. Um, so let me go over a couple of the other ones. Um, the integration by parts, although um, 
so I will include another lecture on integration by parts but basically integration by parts is the product rule backwards so what you want to do is you need to choose um, one factor is a u and another factor is a dv and then go from there so um, for number nine here we're doing the integral of 7x natural log of x dx so we need to pick somebody to be u and somebody to be dv and the, the formula for integration by parts is as follows it's um, uv minus the integral of v du so that's the formula we're using here so um, let's see uh, we want to pick u here to be the natural log of x because it has an easy derivative but a more complicated antiderivative and dv will pick to be 7x so we take the derivative of u and we get 1 over x dx and for dv we take the antiderivative so this will be 7x squared over 2 um, and then we just plug that into the formula so this integral now is equal to u times v which is 7x squared natural log of x over 2 minus the integral of v times du um, which is 7x squared over 2 times 1 over x dx so this is actually just the integral of 7x over 2 so we get 7x squared natural log of x over 2 minus the integral of 7x over 2 dx and that has an antiderivative of 7x squared divide by another 2 so now it's over 4 plus a constant and that would be our uh, integration formula here so we have 7x well I want to make this a fraction and then I want to do 7x squared natural log of x divided by 2 and then I need another term minus um, 7x squared over 4 and they've already got our constant there so we check this one that comes out um, number 10 will be really similar because it's also a polynomial you would let u be the natural log of p and dv to be p to the fifth let's go ahead and look at 11 so for number 11 here we have the integral of 4 minus 6z times e to the negative z dz again with these uh, you can't do substitutions because when you if you pick u to be anything and you took the derivative you wouldn't see that factor appearing which is kind of why substitution works so if you have two things multiplied together and substitution isn't working that's a sign that you want to use integration by parts um, okay so here we would let actually e to the negative z has a very easy antiderivative it's just negative e to the negative z so here we would let u be e to the negative z and if you take the derivative up oh, sorry um, I wanted to make that the antiderivative which is not u but dv so uh, u I want to make the polynomial 4 minus 6z and then dv I want to make e to the negative z dz so when you take the derivative of this one we just get negative 6 and the antiderivative of this one is negative e to the negative z uh, dz was what that would be so let's see if that works so this integral then should become uh, uh, uv so we have negative e to the z times this 4 minus 6z minus the integral of v times du so we have two negatives there so that'll be a positive when you multiply them so we're just going to have 6e to the negative z dz and then that's really easy that's the same antiderivative again you just divide by the negative one so we get negative e to the negative z times this 4 minus 6z and then the negative we're dividing by will make this now a plus so it'll be plus 6e to the negative z plus our constant of integration so 
that is this antiderivative here, negative e raised to the negative z times uh, 4 minus 6z um, plus 6e to the negative z. And that should work. So yeah, we got the check mark, so that one worked out. Um, so 13 will be similar to that one as well. Um, so will 14. Uh, why don't we do the last one? We'll do number 15 just for one more practice problem. And then that should give you a good feel for this. And again, like I said, that lecture will be forthcoming. So we have a definite integral here. So we have the integral from zero to one of y over e to the 6y dy. So it may be helpful to rewrite this. Dividing by e to the 6y is the same as multiplying by e to the negative 6y. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of y times e to the negative 6y dy. So then what do you want to do? Well, we want to pick the same choices as before, right? We want to let u be equal to the y, and dv will be equal to this e to the negative 6y. So um, du is just dy, and v is e to the negative 6y over negative 6. So then we integrate. Uh, so we use the formula u times v. So we have uh, y times e to the negative 6y over negative 6. So I'll put the negative on the outside. Um, minus the integral of v du, which is the integral. Um, so again, let me bring the negative 6 on the outside, so that'll make this a plus. So we have a 1 over 6 out here. And we have e to the negative 6y dy. And all of this is, again, being integrated with respect to 0 and 1. So we'll have to plug those limits in at the end of this. So we have this minus y e to the minus 6y over 6. And then we'll have to divide by another negative 6. So this will actually be minus 1 over 36 e to the negative 6y. And again, we're doing all of this from 0 to 1. So when you plug in 0, what happens? Well, 0 is going to make the first term go away because we've got a, a y there. So we're going to have negative 0 times e to the 0 over 6 minus 1 over 36 times e to the uh, 0 again. And then let me make this bigger. So then we need to subtract and plug in 1. So we've got negative 1 times e to the negative 6 over 6 minus 1 over 36 times e to the negative 6. So let's simplify this. Uh, the first fraction will just be minus 1 over 36. Everything else went away, and e to the 0 is 1. And then the second part, um, actually everything will be a positive now, so we get e to the negative 6 over 6, distributing the negative sign, plus 1 over 36, e to the negative 6. So that's actually um, 1 over 6 is 6 over 36, right? So this is actually really, we can make this 7e to the negative 6 over 36 minus 1 over 36, which you could write as a single fraction due to the common denominator, 7e to the negative 6 minus 1 over 36. So that should be your answer. Um, probably you can do it in the calculator as well. I don't know what, uh, I guess they didn't offer any option to enter it as a decimal, so we better enter it the way we did. So we have our 7e to the negative 6 power minus 1 divided by 36. Let's make sure that works. So say did they so we got it wrong somehow. And it doesn't look like, okay, so let's have one look, see if we can find our mistake. Um, so one other way to check this is you can always use the website Desmos. Um, if you're trying to figure out 
um, what the integral is. It'll do definite integrals for you. Um, but let's just look back through the work. So we have e to the negative 6, that's correct, negative 6y. So u dv, dv you divide by negative 6, that's correct. So uv minus the integral of v times du. That's plus, yeah, good. And then when you divide, we divide by negative. That looks right to me as well. Um, so plugging in, oh, 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 I plugged in zero first and then, and then one. So this is all backwards. Um, it, this should be the negative and this should be the positive. So that would make this positive and both of these negatives. So that's, that's the mistake. I plugged them in the backwards order. So just a silly mistake there. So actually, um, again, this will be negative and this will be positive. So this is negative and this is positive. So I just plugged in a negative by mistake. So um, if we change the signs here, we should fix that right up. Okay, there we go. So that was it, just a simple problem with the uh, negative. Anyway, so that's it for looking at these homework three questions. Um, this is Dr. Lennon signing off.